الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All thanks and praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him and we praise him And we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within our own selves And from our bad deeds Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead astray And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guides, no one can guide And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Qur'an in many verses to obey him the way he ought to be obeyed. Subhanahu wa ta'ala as he said in the meaning of which we will believe, obey Allah the way he ought to be obeyed and do not die except in the state of Islam. O mankind be dutiful to your Lord, the one that created you from one soul and from it he created its mate and from them both he created many men and women. So fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights, Allah indeed is all watcher over you. Or you will believe, obey Allah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always speak the truth. He will guide you to do righteous good deeds and he will forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has indeed achieved a great success. The best speech is the speech of Allah the Quran. The best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of the matters in the religion are the new invented matters in the religion. And every new invented matter in the religion, bid'ah, is astray. And every astray is in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship Him alone. Send the messengers, reveal the books, to convey this message to the people that already have in their innate, in their fitrah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth for them to worship Him alone. And He made the religion and He chose the religion for mankind to embrace is the religion of Islam. To willingly submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after everything had submitted itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willingly or unwillingly. وَلَهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything submitted itself in the heavens and in the earth willingly or unwillingly. And the human beings are called to willingly submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the religion that He chose for this ummah something that is so easy in the capacity of every human being. The only one to be worshipped is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one to be followed is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the essence of the tawheed. It's only one. One to be worshipped and one to be followed. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the best example and the best generation ever brought to mankind, which is the generations of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in his book that for the person to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, that they need to follow the footsteps of the companions of the Prophet والسلام, as he said subhanahu wa ta'ala was sabiqoon al-awwaloon min al-muhajireen wal-ansar. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ 
the foremost among the Muhajireen, those who migrated with the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to Al Madinah, and the Ansar, the people of Al Madinah, those who gave victory to the Prophet ﷺ, and those who followed them, with the condition of the Ihsan, with, with, goodness, with goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. These are the only three categories in which people would seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either to be among the Muhajireen, which is the Qadr of Allah that we cannot attain this level. This is something that is the decree of Allah that it's already passed and it's finished. Or to be from the Ansar and it never happens. This is the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only group, and it's spacious enough for everyone to be under this third group, those who followed them with matters of goodness. So that nobody would come and say and interpret the Quran and the way the Prophet ﷺ, the way they desire. So that it's not subjected to matters of deviation. So that we have the practical example of those who during their life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran to tell them that He is pleased with them. What kind of obedient to Allah's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were doing, how they followed the Prophet والسلام, practically how they applied the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that it become example for the ummah till the day of judgment and that's the beauty of the deen. The deen of Islam was not just some text in theory that people can find under the ground and they can open the books and interpret it the way they like. This deen was implemented in the lives of the people, in their hearts, in their speech, in their actions, in matters of belief, in matters of ibadah, in their manners, akhlaq, in all of their affairs, in transactions. And all of them, they followed one person, and that is the Messenger وسلم, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, saved the life for the Prophet of the Prophet وسلم, for us to follow, and also their ways, and their life. And the Prophet وسلم, ordered us, whenever there is differences, Whenever we see the differences and the tribulations and the different tests and deviations, the Prophet ﷺ showed us the way by saying, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعْشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Whoever lives among you, he will see many differences. So what to do? He said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي عَرْضُ عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِرِ Which means, stay on my sunnah. And the significance of فَعَلَيْكُمْ it does not mean that apply it once in a while. No, it means stay on it. Never leave it whatsoever. My way. And that's not it. And the way of the rightly guided Khalifa after me. And as the Prophet ﷺ said that the Khilafa Rashida, the rightly guided Khilafa after me will be for 30 years. And that's the Khilafa of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhu. So, Allah, so the Prophet ﷺ is ordering us to stay on his way, on his sunnah, and the sunnah and the way of the rightly guided Khalifa after him, because they didn't introduce anything in the deen, they implemented it in the right way. They understood it the right way, they understood the way of the Prophet Sallallahu the most perfect way, and this is basically the factor that should unite the whole Muslim ummah, because this is a matter of creed, this is a matter of belief, it's not a matter of looking into history, that we should love them because they did this and they did this and they did that, no, not that, that not, not all of it like this, but basically, and the first and the most important thing is, it's matter of aqidah mentioned in the Quran. We love them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in the Quran. And whoever doesn't, that means he's denying the Quran. So following their way, this is basically should be our way of life, but the goal is to follow the way of the Prophet So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the, made the deen, Something very easy and simple. Every Muslim should relate all of their actions to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The only one that we worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking the pleasure and so on. And the only one that we follow is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they had certain beliefs according to the Quran and the Sunnah. How they worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their manners and so on. And this is, should be upon ourselves that we have the patience to learn this. One of which, and this is not this is just an example, how they implemented the deen in their lives. They put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us when we complain that when it comes to the five daily salah in the masjid for example, or even optional acts like reciting the Quran, like memorizing the Quran, being obedient to Allah, staying away from sins. Sometimes a person might feel that it's overwhelming, overwhelming or it's difficult, or there's certain circumstances that would pull the person away from the deen. 
what to do to be righteous. And this is to those who are eager to be righteous. Someone that wants to be righteous. Someone that wants to follow the footsteps of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu and to save oneself from the hellfire. The first step, of course, with matters of Iman and so on, but we have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we take our actions, we take the steps, physically we can do it. But then why we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam alayhi salam, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ That when Adam alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on Adam alayhi salam certain words. And as a result of that, of saying it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Adam alayhi salam did his part. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his hand. Musa alayhi salam, and this is something that we will learn in the stories of the Quran. Musa alayhi salam, when he ordered his people to go and to, the, to Jerusalem and to liberate it from the disbelievers. They said to Musa alayhi salam, قالوا يا موسى إن فيها قوما جبارين وإن لن ندخلها حتى يخرجوا منها فإن يخرجوا منها فإن داخلوا. They said that in this city there are people جبارين, humongous, they are so powerful. We have no capacity to meet them. They would defeat us, no doubt. And we would never enter it till they leave it. And if they leave it, then you will enter. The order was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Musa alayhi salam to call his people. And he called his people to do so. They refused and they turned away because looking at their capacity versus the capacity of their enemies. They have no capacity whatsoever to meet them. But then the people of knowledge, and this is the blessings and the barakah and the goodness of matters of knowledge to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do something, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take the means, you'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. As Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said something in the meaning of which, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, if, if this was the order of Allah, to push a mountain from its place. Of course, this is not the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pushing a mountain from its place, it's over the capacity of the human being. But if this was the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, if you put your trust in Allah and you push it, it will move from its place. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never order the believers to do something that is over their capacity. It might seem overwhelming. They might, shaitan and so on, and their own nafs, they might make it to them overwhelming, but if they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for them. That's why, as the ayat says, قَالَ رَجُلَانِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ أَنْعَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَدُخُولُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْبَابِ فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمُوهُ فَإِنَّكُمْ غَالِبُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنُونَ Which means, two from among the people, those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said to the people, وَدُخُولُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْبَابِ Enter the door on them. The question is, physically they can enter the door. Entering the door is, is in that capacity. What's beyond the door is something that is over their capacity. But to enter the door is in their capacity. So what the people those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they told them, just enter the door with them. And if you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you victorious. If you do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you, and you go beyond that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. But then the key is, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا And on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should put your trust. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if this is the order of Allah, then you took the steps in your capacity. You can walk from here to there. You can enter this door. Beyond that, Allah knows best. But since this is the order of Allah, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. And this is how the companions of the Prophet sallallahu understood how to be steadfast in the deen of Allah. But to think from the beginning that we can do every single step and speech and actions based on our own capacity, we are weak, we are deficient. We need the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we need to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for them when their hearts were steadfast on the deen of Allah, had their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll say this, and I'll say this, and I'll say this. Alhamdulillah, the Lord of the Almin, the Rahman, the Rahim, the Malik, the Yawm, the Deen. And the Aqidah of the Muttaqeen, and the Lord of the Almin, the Lord of the Almin. And I pray that there is no one except the Lord, and I pray that there is no one except the Lord. And I pray that there is no one except the Lord, and I pray that there is no one except the Lord. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. The companions of the Prophet 
when they understood this deen of Islam in this comprehensive way, that Al-Iman, matters of belief, is not just something in the heart of belief, but it's beyond that. It's more comprehensive than this. It's the belief in the heart, it's the actions done by the heart, it's the speech of the tongue, it's the physical actions. All of this comprises Al-Iman. Many evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that makes this is something that is a fact. It's a matter of belief. And that's why their life changed accordingly. As we said, they took the steps. They took the steps. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to do something, they would submit themselves immediately to the orders of Allah. And they know that if they leave something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it by something else. Because they had the proper belief that the one that ordered is the owner of all things. He's the one that gave us this life when we didn't earn it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wahhab, is the restorer of all things. One of which this life. We did not do something so that we can earn to be alive. All of a sudden we find ourselves walking and talking and so on and so forth. Who's the one that bestowed this on us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the one subhanahu wa ta'ala at a certain moment he will also order for this soul to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in between we have orders. <laughs> We have a purpose of our life and that is to worship Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and to witness the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be obedient to Him and again is to take these steps, to do what we are ordered to do and then you would see the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are many concepts behind this, one of, the, one of, the, one of which the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu one time he was sitting with his companions of the Allah and uh, the hadith is in Bukhari Muslim when a person entered and he found a spot in the circle and he went there and he sat there. And the second person entered and he was shy. So he sat in the back of the circle. And then the third person entered, but then he turned away and he left. The Prophet ﷺ said, Should I inform you of the three people that came? As for the first one, فَأَوَى إِلَى اللَّهِ فَأَوَاهُ اللَّهِ The first one, he sought refuge in Allah. When he came and he sat in the space to seek the knowledge, to uh, seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is their way of life, to learn the deen, to apply it. So he came and he sat in such a gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was his refuge. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in his refuge, then he does not need anything else. We do not need anyone, anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasbun Allah wa na'ma al-wakeel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhal nabiyu hasbuka Allah wa man ittaba'aka min al-mu'mini. O Prophet of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient also for those who follow you among the believers. So whoever follow the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, he should have this in his heart, that Allah is sufficient for him. He does not need anything from no one. He need only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the obedience is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and so on. So this is the first person. The second person, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَاسْتَحَى فَاسْتَحَى اللَّهُ مِنْ Which means he was shy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was shy from him. In the way that it fits His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of him. And the implications of this, that you see how the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be upon this person. As for the third one that came and turned away and left, أَعْرَضْ فَأَعْرَضَ اللَّهُ عَنْ He turned away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned away from him. That means what? When you think about it physically, what is the three people did physically so much difference between one and the other? One took more, few steps more, sat down in a gathering of knowledge. Another person, maybe he, led, he did one or, or two steps less, and he still sat there, and both they gained the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the third person, physically, he just left. So the effort done physically, it's not overwhelming or anything. But you see the difference between one and the other is like between the heavens and the earth. How is that? It's according to what we do and what steps we take, putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important concept in the deen of Islam. As the hadith in Bukhari Muslim, the hadith Qudsi, that came into many different narrations, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنَا عِنْدِ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي فَلْيَظُنَّ عَبْدِي بِي مَا I am with my slave according to what he think of me. So let him think of me whatever he wills. If you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to be steadfast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. And so on. 
So this is basically what we need to do as Muslims to be steadfast. Take the steps in our capacity, put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, having the understanding and the proper methods of belief, this is something that is so essential. When we believe that the one to be followed is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should not say, well, my way is this way or that way. This is a matter of aqidah. This is a matter of belief. Even when you go ask a person of knowledge, what is halal, what is haram, this or that, in the heart of the questioner, this simple Muslim that doesn't have knowledge whatsoever, to the best of his ability, he wants to know the way of the Prophet ﷺ. He doesn't have the means maybe to know that, that's why he asked the person of knowledge. And the person of knowledge might not be the one that would give him the full details of why this is the way of the Prophet ﷺ, but the questioner he asked according to what Allah ﷻ ordered him, فَاسْأَلُوا إِلَى الذِّكْرِ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know, based on what? Based on the belief that we want to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ because he is the only one to be followed in the absolute sense. No conditions whatsoever. Anyone else is with the condition that we follow the way that he is following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Ulama waratatul anbiya The ulama are the inheritors of the Prophets. The Prophets did not inherit any means of wealth physically, but they inherited this knowledge. And this knowledge, the text, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ sometimes or many times will come against to what we think what is good for us or not is. That's why we send messengers. If we already know what is good and what is bad, then what's the purpose of the messengers and the books and everything? If all human beings, they get together to decide what is good and what is bad, they have no capacity. That's why we have to give up on this. We should not say, I believe and I think and so on, till we refer, refer all of our matters and our affairs to the Qur'an and the way of the Prophet ﷺ, and then we would act accordingly. Musa السلام, his mother cast him in the river, something that beyond one's capacity to think this way. Intelligence would say this is against the means, but since this was an inspiration from Allah ﷻ, the matter is over. We're not saying that we oppose our intelligence, but we have our intelligence versus the wahi from Allah ﷻ. If the wahi, if the revelation comes with one thing, the matter is finished. The salawat of Hamz, the five daily salah will never decrease your wealth or your provisions or bring any harm. It's the opposite actually. It's the, to set our goals and means straight. The haram would never increase one's wealth whatsoever. The sadaqah, the charity would never decrease one's wealth whatsoever. If you say that to someone walking in the streets, he will debate with you. What you're saying is wrong. But we have wah. If the Prophet ﷺ said, and swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مَا نَقَصَ مَنُ عَبْدِ مِنْ صَدَقَةً that the money of a slave never decreases and diminishes based on sadaqah if he gives charity the matter is over for us we don't need to go beyond this this is enough for us and this is what we submit ourselves and it never fails it would continue to be the truth because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so having this type of attitude we need to have the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if he ordered us, that means this is the best way of life, this is the best actions and belief and so on, and then we are patient till we reach our final destination. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make, to make us among those who are successful in this life and in the hereafter, and to make us among the best followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ومتعنا الله بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعاء أقول خولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم صلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه